And now, Drop the Dead Donkey. This episode was first shown in September 91, in a week when hostage Jackie Mann returned home and the West threatened to resume war with Iraq. speculation about the election date. Oh, oh, no, no. Please, look, George, this is a non-story. Well, we've got to cover it somehow. How about this? Bong, November considered more likely since John Major's seen disemboweling a chicken. <laughs> Bong, 28 more opinion polls show if Labour had a naked Kim Bassinger as its leader, they would be ahead by 14 points. <laughs> Thank you, Henry. Yeah, well, maybe we should do something on all these polls that show that people won't vote for Kinnock because he's regarded as a windbag. Has Kinnock responded? Uh, yeah, we got a statement from him. Uh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, David. <laughs> Morning, newsbusters. Are we on turbo thrust? I hope so. Now, I'd like to play you all this VHS that I recorded at the weekend. Yes, actually, guys, I think we are it might prove very educational. Welcome back. Last week, this book, A Gulf of Understanding, came out severely criticising British television's news coverage of the Gulf War. With me in the studio to answer some of the criticism <laughs> is the news editor of Globelink, George Dent. Mr Dent, sloppy, ill-informed, sensationalist, biased, irrelevant and hopelessly lacking in objectivity. These are just some of the words this book uses to describe your Gulf news coverage. What's your reaction to that? As you know, Emma, news coverage is a difficult business. Well, so you're saying low standards are inevitable? Well, no. Uh... To be specific, this book mentions the hours where no news was available, which you filled with idle speculation and waffle. I think that's... yes. <laughs> it's true. There is a danger in too much speculation, and obviously we were careful to avoid that. Oh, I understand Globelink employed five different generals over the Gulf War period. Obviously we're not saying our coverage was perfect. There were mistakes. Oh, so presumably you've started an inquiry into your Gulf coverage? Yes. <laughs> yes, one is going to be carried out um, quite soon. And I assume its findings will be made public? Yes. <laughs> yes, of course. Thank you, Mr Dent. And uh, we look forward to that report. <laughs> I think George could have been spared that, don't you, Gus? Why the hell did you agree to an inquiry like that? Yes, Chief. You did seem to let a few scuds past your patriots. Well, it wasn't my fault. She was all chatty before the interview, then she suddenly came at me with all these difficult questions. Difficult questions, nonsense. That was Sissy's stuff. I'd have humiliated you, George. She did humiliate him. <laughs> I suppose she did all right for a popsy. At least it wasn't one of those downy-cheeked adolescent smoothies. God, Paxman Suchet Snow. When I was their age, I was spending three days hiding in a brothel, playing catch with live hand grenades, and drinking vintage champagne from a Vietnamese belly dancer's navel. Well, not everybody had the Vietnam War. This wasn't Cut Vietnam. This was a stag party in Catford. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing some of the things she could pick up using only her... I don't her... think we want to know. I do. Amazing some of the things I picked up. Thank God for Alexander Fleming, eh? Thank you, Henry. Look, I did my best during that interview. Well, I think announcing an inquiry is an excellent idea. Do you? Certainly, provided, of course, we don't hold one. Especially with the prospect of our boys going back to the Gulf. But I promised publicly to announce but the results. But what is this to examine about the Gulf War coverage? Well, for a start, the way reporters living with the troops became partisan. That's a load of ratners. <laughs> I feel that inquiry would be... An option well worth considering. I agree, George. Yes. You have a good mole. Terrific. Ah, oh, running orders. Thank you, Joy. That's very kind of you. No, it isn't. It's what I'm underpaid to do, so please don't make it worse by patronising me. <laughs> oh, George, we should do something on this. 
Heseltine's reporting back on the government's environmental successes. Right. How long should we allow for that? Five, Five seconds. seconds. <laughs> well, according to that party political, we've got the cleanest water in Europe. Well, that's because we've got the most detergent in it. <laughs> we should deal with this, Dave. Dave. Here we go. Sally's on TVAM, plugging a new book. Yes. Well, it's funny you should ask that, because I actually got the idea for the book during a conversation with Princess Diana. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> Hello. I'm ringing to complain about TVAM giving airtime to that repulsive Sally Smedley. I do not pay my licence fee in order to listen to some junk that's just trying to sell me her book. I, I'm two children, and when Sally Smedley came on, one of them was sick and remained distressed the rest of the evening. Afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Dostoevsky. Uh, just because your biography's been turned down by nine different publishers. Only on legal grounds. Once Princess Margaret dies, there'll be no problem. <laughs> Would you enjoy simpering on those sofas? It is very interesting, actually. Yes, I was particularly interested when they asked if you'd employed a ghostwriter. Well, it's very easy to snipe, Alex. I don't suppose you've even read my book. No, no I haven't, Sally. Have you? <laughs> Oh, another ultimatum from Bush. Yes, Adam's finished, really, isn't he? Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, we blew his domestic opponents to bits in the trenches, we enabled him to massacre the Shiites and the Kurds, we've made him a hero to Arab fanatics, and left him totally defenceless, apart from his best troops and a few H-bombs. <laughs> He's a broken man. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, how's it going, task force? Nuking them before they nuke you? <laughs> now, um... <laughs> I'd like to introduce Octavia, who'll be with us for a week. She's very interested in TV journalism and, coincidentally, happens to be the daughter of our much-loved proprietor, Sir Royston. Please. I just want to be treated like any other trainee. I'm quite happy to make tea, <laughs> run errands, whatever. I'm sure that won't be necessary. De Dave, perhaps you could show Octavia around the command capsule. Sure. Coffee? Mm. Oh, by the way, Nice item on Yugoslavia last Friday. I particularly like the bullet-riddled pram. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry I'm late, everybody. I've been talking through the allegations about Maxwell with the lawyers. You know, I think they're frightened of him. Every time I mention his name, they cross themselves. <laughs> George, I, I understand you told Alex to start this review of our golf coverage. Yes, well, I did say publicly that we would Well, it's just I feel Sir Royston might be a smidgen upset about the controversy potential. And with his franchise bid up for consideration... Yes, actually, Gast, could we discuss this some other time? I know I've got rather a nasty migraine. Been under a lot of stress. You know, George, that stress will only increase when Sir Royston Look, holds you up... I am sick of being threatened by some bloated Philistine megalomaniac! George, meet Octavia, Sir Royston's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> so pack it in, Henry. <laughs> Then Henry said to Dennis Thatcher, listen, if I wasn't so pissed, I'd have him myself. <laughs> you know, I'm not sure Dave is the best person to be showing her around. Hmm. Well, I can see the headline now. Mogul closes new station after employee screws daughter. <laughs> yes. Still, the staff's private lives are their own. Perhaps we should send Dave on a holiday. Anything else breaking, Alex? Well, there's the boxing debate. Uh, you know, is being bludgeoned remorselessly about the head until you lose consciousness bad for you. <laughs> oh, and then Thatcher's attacking Europe tomorrow. Right. 420, crop rocks on. Oh, come on, you're not going to watch a kids' programme, are you? We're only watching it because Sally's on. So, Sally... Oh, great, it's Craig the Crocodile. Where did you get the idea for Let's Read the News? <laughs> of all things, it was actually during a chat with Princess Diana. Oh. <laughs> we were talking about children, and I said what a good idea it would be if someone could explain how we make the news. And she thought it was a good idea. Oh, yes. She said, how fascinating. Yeah, that's what she said me when I met her. <laughs> you met her, Craig. Yeah, we shared a couple of titties over the Buckhouse Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I said, you know what, Diana? <laughs> That's what she asked me to call her. Diana, I said. Someone should show children that reading the news isn't as easy as it seems. Now, stop it, Craig, or we'll turn you into a handbag. <laughs> So, Sally, how did you start 
want to write this book. Easy. Well, she called in a ghostwriter. No, I didn't. Actually. <laughs> you mean See, you wrote this rubbish yourself? No, I, I mean. Whoa. See, what I mean. Give a kiss. I'm sorry. Give a kiss. Oh, no. Don't be naughty, Granny. <laughs> oh, truth, kids. She's a great snogger. So, Sally, what's next in the pipeline? Well, I am. Um... There. Let's uh, watch the latest Kylie video. <laughs> Bit of a PR nightmare. Yes, they were always in safe hands with Sir Royston in charge. What? Oh. <laughs> Economic survey, recession over. Right now, tomorrow, Ian McKellen's visiting number 10. Surprise majors thinking of supporting the right to be gay. He obviously just misheard. He supports the right to be grey. <laughs> They're good. Right. <clears throat> now, Baker's going to say more about car crime today. Yeah, now that's something that should be sorted out. All these bloody teenagers trying to prove they're macho on the roads. Mm. You know, I had one yesterday. He deliberately cut me up at the lights. Did you get his number? No. Nah, burnt the sucker off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my Porsche does not to, to 60, 60 in 6.8 6. seconds. <laughs> yeah, well, he was pretty gobsmacked, actually. Yeah. Especially when I did that handbrake turn into Trafalgar Square. <laughs> Another economic survey. Recession's getting worse. Sorry I'm late. Daddy insisted on giving me a lift. Oh, yeah. Ah, Joy, a cup of coffee would be wonderful. Mmm, wouldn't it just? Um, look, are you happy working here? No. Nope. Right. It's just in many ways you're the most efficient PA we've ever had. It just would be nice sometimes if you made a bit of an effort to be more cheerful. Very well, George, as I hand out the post, I'll wear a whirly bow tie, turn cartwheels and sing hits from South Pacific. How's that? George, George. I'm increasingly worried about Octavia. She seems very friendly with Dave. And Dave's friendships do tend to, how shall I put this, wander south of the belly button. <laughs> yes, well, she's not our responsibility, is she? True. But I suspect if anything untoward happened to his little girl, then Sir Royston would crush us. <laughs> like a mammoth stepping on two dung beetles. <laughs> Anyway, I, I mustn't interfere. I'm not here. Anybody got anything they want to chip into this review of our golf coverage? Yes, the way everyone lied to us. Of course they lied. There was a war on. But I did my best. I know that my reports were fair, honest and responsible. I thought you'd say that. And so the war is over for these thousands of Iraqi troops who were only too pleased to be taken prisoner. The holes in their shoes and the terror in their eyes tell of the terrible ordeal that they have suffered for the last month. They seemed amazed and grateful when they were given water and a bar of chocolate before surrendering to allied forces. Undertrained and under... For God's sake! <laughs> Oi! Are you sure there aren't any more prisoners around here? <laughs> well, everybody else managed to bloody capture some! <laughs> That's a disgrace. Yes. <clears throat> but I did get a usable take in the end. <laughs> oh, look, come on. I had to send in something. Oh. And at least I didn't file my reports from an air-conditioned hotel. No, I was out there on the front line with the flies and the bullets. And the cormorants. What? Nothing. Look, I do hope this inquiry isn't going to be frankness-heavy. Gus, it's going to be constructive. I'm sure everybody will get something from it. The sack, hopefully. <laughs> George Dent. I said Royston. Hello. Octavia. Yes, she seems very happy. Uh, today, she's shadowing the one o'clock team, and tomorrow it's the sex. At six. <laughs> then I'm going to send her out the stick library, the stock library, uh, to see how old film is conceived. Concerned. Concerned. <laughs> so, as you can see, 
Everything's fine. Yes, I'm feeling perfectly all right, thank you. You can be very rude sometimes, can't you? Where was I? I trust this report will include the fact that I was the first British journalist into Kuwait. The first one to pass out from alcohol poisoning. Careful, dear boy. Cormorants. What's he talking about, Damien? Don't listen to him, George. The DTs, I expect. He's rambling. Am I indeed? Do you remember that huge oil stick going past the Saudi coast? Well, it wasn't going fast enough for our Damien. It meant that he didn't have any heart-wrenching pictures of oil-soaked seabirds. So he got a barrel of oil. Oh, no. And he started dunking cormorants. <laughs> and as for his tragic picture of dead fish on the shoreline, it's not surprising they were dead. They were trout from the hotel freezer. <laughs> Look, those were the pictures that you wanted and I delivered them. Just a few days early, that's all. I am seriously shocked. And the sun is on the way up. What? No, I have to say, I'm deeply disturbed Look, by this revelation. we can't just I... shove it all under the carpet. I mean, after all, we are a serious, professional... Shh. Morning, everyone. Morning, Sally! <laughs> Top story, war in Yugoslavia. The trouble with this, it's so complicated to get across to the viewer. Nonsense, it's perfectly clear to me. All oh, right. Well, what's your opinion, Sally? Do you think that the Serbs will attack Bosnia-Herzegovina? Quite possibly. <laughs> yes, but where does that leave Ruritania? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? <laughs> Well, personally, I think Ruritania will merge with inertia, malaria, beetle mania, and upper hernia. What do you think, sir? Well, yeah, I. Like... <laughs> right, who wants a video of Sally being humiliated by a crocodile? Yeah, I've thrown in George Best, pissed on Wogan, and all the best bits out of that sex education video. Gotta have a word. Dave, you seem to be getting on very well with. Uh... Octavia? Yes? Yes. I suppose you're not, uh, you and her, you haven't, uh, gone out to the cinema. <laughs> we went to see a film, yes. What is this, George? Uh, nothing. It's, well, it's just with her being Sir Royston's daughter. I was wondering about your intentions. Oh, you mean sex? It's just I don't think Sir Royston would like it. Well, Sir Royston wouldn't be getting it. <laughs> You're serious, aren't you? Listen, George, it's nobody's business what's between Octavia and me. Yes, yes, you're right. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have mentioned it. It's just there are all these stories about how Sir Royston's so desperately overprotective. Oh, I see. What sort of stories, exactly? Well, somebody was telling me about this guy who was seeing a lot of his other daughter. And he got him fired, then he put him on a blacklist so he couldn't work again and destroyed his life, basically. <laughs> Just for seeing a lot of his daughter? Yes. Poor guy committed suicide, apparently. <laughs> Still, you're absolutely right, Dave. It's nobody's business but your own. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Cheers, George. Magnificent, George. I didn't know you had it in you. You played him like a master. How do you mean? You old fox. <laughs> George, now, I'm not going to complain, but the behaviour of the staff here is pathetic and infantile, and I want you to do something about it. Absolutely! <laughs> well, you grow up! It's like working at Broadmoor. <laughs> Have you got those tickets for that Julie Walters film tonight, Dave? Ah, um, actually, I can't make it tonight. Oh, why? I'm, um, I'm washing my curtains. <laughs> Right. George, I've just finished reading Alex's report. 
Yes, yeah, very stimulating, isn't it? Yes. I was particularly stimulated by the passage which implies that the government used us as a propaganda tool to exaggerate the military strength of the Iraqis. Yes, um... Has Sir Royston seen the report? Oh, yes. He says it's just what we need. Really? Yes. I think his exact words were, just what we bloody well need right now. <laughs> he made a suggestion which I'll stick in your toaster to see what pops up. <laughs> he wondered if we should keep it internal. No, I promise this report will be made public and it will be. Fair enough, Coach. I understand your position, and I'm sure Sir Royston will when you explain it to him. Explain it? Well, he gave me the firm impression he'd be ringing you for a chat. Alex, Jackie Mann, RAF Lynham. Look, we don't want to pester him. Well, absolutely. We'll film from some bushes with a telescopic lens. <laughs> that way we won't bother him. So how about tonight, then? Um, no. No, I, I uh, can't make it tonight, OK? What, again? Yes, I'm um, shampooing my cushion covers, all right? <laughs> well, looks like the thing between Dave and Octavia's over. Yes, good thing, too. Absolutely. Mm, leaves a field open for me. Going public with this report is pointless. No one's interested in this carping. The war's over. It was a complete success. Oh, yeah, because the region's really stable now, isn't it? <laughs> and the criticisms of the reporting are unfair. Oh! Yeah, and why was there no mention of the special reports from Jordan just so that some old has-been could get a drink? I will not be slandered by a cormorant, Dunker. <laughs> right, all right, all right, all right. Look, we have to go public with this report. George promised that we would. Yes, and George sticks to his guns. Has the Royston run you No. <laughs> Thank you. What? Irritable bowel syndrome. <laughs> Sally's on! So, you actually got the idea from talking to Princess Diana? Yes, that's right. Fantastic! Now, Sal, you said you're a fan of the programme. Oh, yes, I never miss it. So you'll know what happens next? Yes. What is it, kids? It's... <laughs> Plunge. That's right, that's when we dunk you in gunk. Oh, no, well, you see, I don't think anyone actually meant it. If you just come with me, Sal. Come yeah. on. You know, there is just the odd moment that makes life worth living. Thanks for being such a good sport, Sal, and taking the plunge! No! <laughs> George, you've just missed a very special moment, mate. George, two messages. Your wife rang, said, can you pick up the dry cleaning? And Sir Royston rang, said he's going to hack you into tiny pieces and feed you to his rock pilots. He's ringing you back. Thank you, Joy. Right. Uh, George, this report. I still want it published. Oh, absolutely. I was just wondering about a little postponement. As long as it still gets published. Oh, quite. Shall we say January 1993? Yes, that sounds about right. <laughs> Hello, Craig the Crocodile speaking. <laughs> uh, yes, Sir Royston. I'll, uh, uh, George. Uh, Sir Royston. Look, if it's about the report, I can explain. Yes, we... Well, yes, but... Yes, but I... The report? No. Dave. Oh, my God, what's he done? Not enough, apparently. Sir Royston wants to know why a member of my staff has upset his daughter by cold-shouldering her. Ah, well, that's what you get for interfering, George. Dave, are you doing anything tonight? Yeah, cancel it. Oh, hello. Yes, I'd like to book a table for two, please. <laughs> Anything new? Uh, minors rioting in Romania. Kenneth Baker will probably blame the parents. Well, I could go there. Um, tension increases in Iraq. I could go there. And more on McCarthy. Oh, incidentally, Damien, I've had a complaint about you at the McCarthy Jill Morell press conference. Yes, a heartwarming, tender story, wasn't it? Did you or did you not ask them to snog for the cameras? Well, you should have heard what the man from the Sun asked them to do. Oh, Jackie Mann at RAF Lynham. I could go there. I don't think so. Well, there must be something. Oh, what's this? Radiation scare at Sellafield. Oh, yes, you could go there. You're very funny, Alex. Mm -hmm.